What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and now it's time for a change. We all know at this point my life would likely end if I don't grind. But I've been keeping things to Final Fantasy. So what if we changed things up a little bit? Final Fantasy games do have some broken grinds in them for sure. But Ultimately, when grinding early on, not only does it take a lot longer, but in most cases, you actually can't even reach the absolute strongest you can get. Sure, you don't need to min-max stats in Final Fantasy, but then again, you don't need to get overpowered early either. Now, what if we didn't do it on Final Fantasy? Instead, what if we did it on a game that is designed around grinding? The results? Well, pretty humorous to say the least. So, without further ado, let's find out just how overpowered you can be before you complete Chapter 4 in Desagaya 5. Now, I do just want to take this time to thank Ness America for sending me a PC copy of the game to give away to a lucky viewer. That's right, for the first time in my Overpowered series, I'll be doing a giveaway of the game in question. And all you have to do to win is leave a comment down below letting me know, uh, letting me know what you like the most about this video and what you like the most about Desigaya. The giveaway will end in, let's see, well, because of the early access, we'll have to give it a bit of time, so we'll go with the end of February. So the giveaway will end on the 29th of February. So get those comments in, guys, for a chance to win. Also, I just want to mention these videos do take an extremely long time to make. So if I could ask you guys to hit that like button and leave a comment, because it greatly helps with YouTube's terrible algorithm. Also, a big shout out to my current Patreons and members for helping to support the channel. If you want to help out and get your name listed here as well, then check out the links in the description to become a Patreon today. Or you can also support me by becoming a subscriber and sh uh, sharing my content. Every little helps, guys. Okay, so with the little plug out of the way, let's jump into things, shall we? Now, if you're unaware, Dizzy Guy games are all about the grind and being overpowered. The entire premise is to get the stats into multiple millions and doing damage in the range of multiple billions. The stories are more wacky and funny instead of serious, but still a nice laugh. The real joy of these games though is the post game, where you can level up from level 1 to 9999 in one fight, deal billions upon billions of damage and fight super bosses so strong it's either you one shot them or they one shot you. But that's not what we're doing in this video, instead we're going to seriously limit ourselves to just the first four chapters of the game. This means there's no land of carnage, we don't have all the classes and we're also missing massive amounts of game features that you normally unlock as you progress the story. You see in Desigaya the story itself is more of a tutorial for the game and if you wanted to just get to chapter 4, well you could do it in 10 minutes pretty easily if you really wanted to. Needless to say though, we won't be doing it in 10 minutes. Instead, we're going to break the game so hard you'll question why you even need all those extra features. So, to start with, accept all the DLC options when you gain control. The PC and Switch version come with all of the DLC by default, however if you're on PS4 don't worry too much, these aren't required at all. It just saves a few minutes from creating extra characters. Also, for the love of god, change your settings to disable animations and set all speeds to the fastest, if you want to stay sane while doing this. Now, once you have all the DLC, we're actually going to just rush through to chapter 4 and you can do this just by using Killia, the main character. Just be sure to give him new armor and weapons every chapter. 
and also buy some healing items every chapter. So, 10 to 15 minutes later, you're in chapter 4. Now, even though we want to get as overpowered as possible before the end of this chapter, why did we rush straight here? Well, a couple of reasons actually. First, we need to unlock a whole bunch of extra systems like the cheat shop, a way to modify and make enemies stronger. The innocent camp, skill boosting and the strategy assembly along with the squad NPC. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg for what's in the game, but for this video, we're limited to just this. So, it's now time to move on to unlocking all of the classes we can, and we're actually going to cheese this. Pretty hard, I might add. So, first of all, make sure you have a maid character, then go to the shop and sell off absolutely everything you own. Don't worry, it's all worthless anyway. Next, go to the item shop and buy as many unopened soda as you can. After getting to chapter 4 and selling everything you have, or if you have the 1 million HL DLC, you can pretty easily buy over 1000 sodas. The good thing about these items, however, is the fact that when you use it, it turns into opened soda. So basically, these 1000 sodas become 2000 items. Not only that, but in Desagaya 5, you gain EXP when you do an action on yourself, regardless of if it's a buff skill or an item. Also, no matter what level you are, it only takes 8 items to always give you a level. But, we're going to tweak that slightly. Go to the cheat shop and change all of the values for EXP, Mana, HL and Skill EXP. Because we're in chapter 4, you can lower everything down to 80% and raise EXP to 180%, meaning now we just need 5 items to get a level. Next, go to the strategy assembly and change your maid's subclass. Ideally, we want to max everything here. That's going to come later though. First and foremost is unlocking the Sage class. This is the class that is going to not only solo the entire grind for us, but also speed it up by seriously hundreds of times. No, seriously, if you do this without the Sage class before post-game overload abilities, it actually will massively increase the time it takes. So, to get the Sage, we need to unlock a few classes as well. First, on your maid, set the subclass to Warrior or Valkyrie. We need to get these to rank 2. Do the same for two monster classes, like the two prennies you start with, uh, and make one a Magician sub and the other can be anything. I make mine a maid, because nothing says Prenny Torment like forcing it to learn how to be a cute maid. Now, go into stage 2-1, which is the first mission in the Spirit Interment area, and move your maid to a corner square in the yellow section, which has an extra 50% EXP effect on, where the enemy monsters won't come for you either. Now, magic, uh, magic change the two prinnies to the maid, and while here, get your maid to use the sodas on yourself. Thanks to the maid's ability as well, you can use two items per turn. Not only will this level us up every three uses, but for now, it's also by far the fastest way to unlock subclasses. For now, anyway. So keep doing this until your subclass has two full stars. Once that's done, finish the battle and go change the subclass again. This time also you don't have to magic change as it will be slow at first, but as your maid starts leveling up and you start getting more EXP from the item, it does become faster and faster. Personally, I choose not to do it and just focus on getting all the subclasses with the maid itself. You see, once we can make a rank 2 warrior and a mage, we can then accept and turn in the quest from the quest giver NPC to unlock the ability to make a gunner class. But because we got them to rank 3, we can also do the same to unlock the magic knight class. Also, your mage should be rank 2 by now as well. So, set your subclass to magic knight and your magic change monster to gunner and raise that to rank 2. Once that's done, you can unlock the Professor class. Again, set your monster subclass to that and get it to rank 2. Okay, now with Magic Knight, we need to get this all the way to rank 4. So this is going to take some time. Not only that, we want to use this stage to get a massive amount of levels. So we need some mana. 
Now, we'll go to the cheat shop and change mana to 180%, then set the enemy strength to 20 stars. This makes enemies a lot stronger, but it also increases the mana, HL and EXP they give. Then go into the item world. It doesn't really matter which item because at this point your mage should already be pretty strong. The goal here is simply to get 5000 mana. While doing this you will also gain some EXP towards your Magic Knight subclass as well. Another way to get the mana however is if you have the DLC, the Poor Clever Prinny has a bunch of evilties you can sell at the skill shop NPC which takes you all the way to 4825 meaning you only need a tiny bit more. Now, once you have your mana, leave the item world by either getting to floor 10 or using a Ganty Axis. Then go to the strategy assembly and save the game. This is going to involve some RNG. So by saving, you can just load your save if you fail to pass the bill. But what we want to do now is pass the triple EXP bill, which is going to mean instead of needing five items to level up, we only need two, AKA a level every single turn. We could also increase this a lot more, but that involves messing around with the DLC characters. So because of that, I'm going to leave it out of this video so everybody can follow along even if they don't have the DLC. Now, once Triple EXP is passed, set all of your items apart from sodas and buy the full 2000 sodas. Go into stage 1-1, one, one, uh, sorry, 2-1 and use all of them. By the end, your mage should be well over level 2000, even if you don't use all the sodas. I stopped here shortly after getting this level as it's largely pointless to go higher. You can however go all the way to 9999 this way if you wanted to. With that said, complete the stage, turn in the quest to unlock the sage and feel free to unlock any other classes. We're going to get them anyway. Now, at this point, we want to create a high level sage right off the bat. The problem here is that costs money and you might not have any after paying to pass uh, the bill for triple EXP. So, back to the cheat shop, modify the modifier to as much HL as you can and rank it up to a 20 star difficulty. Then just go do a few normal stages, you only need a few hundred thousand for this next step. Now create the highest level sage you can. Okay, now we can start breaking things. First, we're going to need some good gear. There are a few different ways people do this. Some like to farm the hospital rewards, others go the other route which is capturing mobs and then making them into citizens. So put your sage in your capture squad and then go into mission 3-4 on 20 stars and keep capturing. Raise the level of your capture squad until you have the capture skill rank 2 ability. Once this is done, just keep capturing and don't use them to level up squads. Instead, go to the interrogation NPC and choose to release them so they become NPCs in your base. Then, just accept the quests for capturing and making them NPCs. And the final reward is an EXP potion 4 and some unique weapons like the megaphone, which is going to come in handy. Last but not least, you can also increase a skill to rank 9 to get a Chaos Orb. Given how tough that would be to get the huge amount of mana at the moment though, we're going to go with the capture route. This way we can work on two different quests, one for capturing itself and one for a weapon. As soon as you get the megaphone, equip that onto your sage, inner hoff and spot. The reason for this is the megaphone actually drastically increases the chance enemies will surrender at the end of the fight. This way we can start boosting our squads up. The other item, EXP Potion 4, is a high level item, so we're going to use that to jump into the item world. First though, lower the stars back down to zero and go to the strategy assembly and pass the better bonuses and charge bonus bills. This way we instantly start the next stage with a bonus level of 3 and the bonus items are 2 ranks higher as well. Now, save and enter the EXP potion. Keep resetting until you get a good high level item in the first three slots and then finish the stage. Now you can either use a Genti Exit or continue on. I suggest just going to the 10th floor and clearing that. It gives you some skill EXP for land decimator, mana, class EXP and a few extra items and levels as well. Also, 
If you come across either invincibility or reverse damage tiles, you can just keep ending your turn on them and let mobs wail on you to level up your armor and weapon level as well. Just note, to level your weapons, you need a class that can counter, and I highly suggest getting your armor to level 100. This straight up triples any stats you gain from armors, and is going to be a massive difference later in terms of stats. Either way, once you're out, check your items now for the item with the highest level in the item world. For me, that is level 58. Keep that item and sell off anything else you don't need, then go back to the assembly and pass the two bills again for better items and a higher tier charge. Then just repeat these two steps until you get an item with a base level of 108. This way you can find a rank 32 item, the testament. This is what we want. You can go further until you get to rank 35 items. I personally don't see the point in this however, it has a lot of RNG and a testament really helps us speed things up. Now, go to the skill NPC and power up your land decimator by one level. Ideally, you want to keep an eye on the SP. As a rule of thumb, I like being able to use it 20 times for every 10 item floor stages. Now, for me, I could get it to level 3. Now, sell all of your useless junk and keep going through the item world in the testament. You want to go all the way down to floor 99. As soon as you get to stage 10, change the item path to the innocent path. This way we can farm innocents at the same time. When your item is full of innocents, go ahead and just put them in the innocent camp. Also, after you kill 3 more, you get a new innocent squad. Put your sage in this squad and start leveling it with all the prisoners you get that surrender. Once you hit stage 99, get out and save the game. Now, make sure you have some stealing hands. If you do, great. Go back into the testament and go to floor 100. The item god 2 has the item rank of the item you're currently in. So, in this case, we can steal the rank 36 Exodus from the item god 2. Make sure to get this. Once you have it, we're going to repeat this process again. The only difference is, we're going to go into the Exodius now instead of the rank 32 Testament. Also, because the Exodius is rank 36, that means we now have a chance to get rank 36 to rank 39 gear from enemies and the bonus table. You see, rank 36 plus gear can only be gotten in items that are rank 35 or higher. Our goal here is simple, we want some rank 39 gear, ideally the staff which is called Solomon's staff and the emblem which is called Arcadia. We can 100% get an Arcadia from the item god 2 on floor 100, but the Solomon's staff is going to be a pain. We need to check all enemies gear and try to steal it from them, or check the bonus every floor to get it. You can also go for other rank 39 gear as well during this step. So now that we have an Arcadia, it would be a good idea to prepare for future dupes as well. You might have come across a stage in the item world with a super huge tower in it that you can't climb. Well, at the very top of that tower is an NPC who will duplicate the item you're currently in. A perfect dupe location. So, the same level stats and even innocence, effectively letting you double your innocence. But in order to get to the top of that tower, we need a really high jumping ability. So let's do that now. First, level up the life support unit and place Killia inside it. Once leveled up, this lets you jump three times in a row. Still not very high though, but that's fine. So go into the very first stage and use your items to boost the bonus gauge all the way to the max and then complete the stage to get the super jump ability. Teach this to Killia as well and equip it in his Evelties. Now Killia can jump super high and you won't have any issues getting to the top of the tower. Okay, back to the Arcadia once again. We want to go all the way to floor 99 Exit out and save again, because the item god on floor 100 is going to have a trap. This is pretty much the best item in the game. 
There is technically something better, but it would be impossible to max out at this stage of the game, so it's useless for us. Now that we have a trap, we can really start moving forward. Place your high level innocence into this trap, so things like your statisticians, your managers, mentors and instructors, etc. And then enter the item world for it. Now on floor 10, change the item route to the mystery room route. We want this for a few reasons. Number one, we can get the duping mystery room more often, which gives us another trap and doubles all our innocence. Number two, we can power up the weapon at fear of it with extra levels, albeit less than using the, uh, the level route. Number three, we work on the training bonus for the item while leveling it. With all this in mind, our goal is again floor 99. However, during this process, your stage should reach full class mastery. When that happens, you want to go ahead and change its subclass to the Nefer Noble. Oh, sorry, the Never Noble. My god, I really can't talk right now. And then go back to the item world NPC. You see all those items we've been stockpiling? It's time to turn them into points and pass a bunch of bills on the trap. Specifically, movement first, followed by jump. Just make sure to take off any good innocence from the items you trade in, and remember to keep your highest tier level items as well. Don't worry about wasting bills or anything like that. In Disagaya 5, you can pass as many bills as you want because they are tied to item king and item god kills. As such, you can earn as many bills as you want. Also, if you manage to dupe the items, then head back to the innocent NPC, take all innocents off, both items, and combine them. Then add what you want back to so add all the innocents back onto the trap that you're leveling just so you can dupe them again. So, save on floor 99, then on floor 100, steal another trap and kill the item god too. Then continue leveling that same trap as high as possible duping it every chance you get. Its max level is 500. You can raise that, but for that you need post game. We can still strengthen it further, however, but before we do, we really need to get uh, three level 500 traps. Once that is done, it's time to work on a weapon. At this point, you should for sure have a rank 39 staff weapon called the Solomon's Staff. If you're super, super, super unlucky, then the Almighty Staff, which is rank 38, or the Fortuna, rank 37, will do fine. Just get to floor 100 and steal the next rank item from the Item God until you get your Solomon's Staff. Then again, go to floor 100 and steal the rank 40 staff called the Genesis Wand. Put this on the item growth route on floor 10 and then proceed to floor 100, steal another one from the item god 2 and continue leveling it to level 500. Now, weapon bills are slightly different to armor bills as well. We still want to pass them all of course, however we have a lot more of the important non-stats to pass. So make sure you max out movement, jump, attack range, counter attacks and critical rate. This should be done quite easily on the road to level 500, but if not, don't worry because you for sure will get enough bills during a later step in this guide. Now, while doing this, make sure to interrogate your prisoners and convert them to magic extracts and merge them along with shards. You see, it's like you use these shards and extracts when used on your character permanently increase that character's stats. However, there's a way to spread these effects out, but there's not much point in doing this until your extract and shards get much, much more potent. Ideally, at the cap, which is 10 million in each stat, apart from HP and SP. So, working on this will take quite a while, hence why it's important to start now. Alternatively, however, there is a better weapon, but it's slightly more RNG dependent. If you reach level 100 weapon mastery while in the item world, you can get another rank 40 weapon. 
Now, these are known as rank 40-2 weapons. They're just as strong as rank 40 items, hence they are no, uh, just known as the dash because of the fact that they aren't weaker or stronger. However, they do have points in every stat, unlike the normal rank 40 items, making them slightly better. It's entirely up to you for which you want to go for, but I suggest the 40-2 weapon. In this case, aim for the staff, the Yijigrassel, and I know I've just butchered that pronunciation, and you know what? I'm going to butcher it even more coming up. Okay, you have four level 500 items and some good innocence now. It's time to really max out an item. Go into a trap, but before you do, set the enemy difficulty at 20 stars. Then set the item route to the invader route. You see, in Disgaea 5, not all stats come from the levels. We can still power them up further by increasing the kill bonus and the training bonus. Training bonus goes up when you complete a mystery room or kill pirates. Hence, we set the route to the invader route. Kill bonus is increased just by killing mobs. However, it gains a boost from the enemy star rank, which is why we set this to 20. Just be warned, because these items aren't Land of Carnage items, the bonus adds up very, very slowly. You know you hit the cap though when you stop gaining stats on your item. Once one is done, you can either keep trying to duplicate it or move on and do it again on another item. However, I'm going to say this now. Do not attempt to max an item here. The amount of time it would take to actually stat cap an item is beyond ludicrous. To the point it would literally take over 1000 times longer to do it now as compared to do it in the land of carnage. Because of this, and the fact I'm not going to sit here for over 3,000 hours grinding this out to max, we're going to move on. Now, at this point, we have three level 500 traps and a level 500 Yijigrassel, which means now we just need to do one more weapon. At this point, you can take your pick of what you want, either another Yijigrassel or the Megaphone. Personally, I would suggest the Megaphone. The stats might be pretty bad, but the unique ability is far more important. So, let's get that to level 500 as well. Okay, now all the weapons are done. You're absolutely going to be max level at this point. So, hopefully you've been reincarnating while you've been doing this. And by now, you should have a bunch of amazing innocents as well. Like 900 statisticians. So, we're going to move on to the final stretch. Because of how early we're limited in the story, sadly we can't level all subclasses for 10 million stats. We also can't really make use of any broken evilties due to not having many slots either, and of course we don't have the character world, so we're going to max as much as we can. First, make sure the game is set to 20 stars and reincarnate. You lose your level here, but you get some extra stats to add on to your total. So, now we're going to maximize our reincarnation stats while also working on our prisoner extracts. This is going to take a little while if you haven't been working on this the entire time. The plus side though is it gives a massive stat improvement. Now, continue going through your already level 500 traps. The reason for this is every time you kill an item guard 2 on floor 100, you gain a unique innocent on that item. So of course, we're going to get all 19 of them, for every trap and every weapon we use. Of course, capturing and interrogating and reincarnating for all of those extra stats. Just in case you're wondering, you need a total of 186,000 levels uh, when you reincarnate total. That is the maximum cap you can get. Now, once your magic extract and shards are ready to be used, we need to make sure we have a maid or a class that has maxed maid out as a subclass because we need a few of those evilties, namely cannon for an arm which increases item range by 2 and licensed caregiver, this one is super important, which also increases the range. The last one, though, is because it lets an item be used on multiple people at the same time. 
meaning that extract which increases stats by 10 million. Well, originally it could only hit one person, but now it can hit five people, which means we have just increased five people to gain an extra 10 million stats. Once all is said and done, you end up with a character like this. Level 500 gear, immune to all elements because of our innocence. Likewise, we're immune to all statuses. We have capped Broker and Statistician Innocence for maximum EXP and money gain. Mentor, Instructor and Manager Innocence are also high or capped depending on your luck. Meaning we get insane mana, skill EXP and weapon mastery EXP. And we inflict every single status ailment with a single attack. We have maxed out stat bonuses from reincarnation, 10 million stats from shards and extracts across five different characters. Finally, we have five unique innocents from our gear due to killing the item god too so many times. This level of power is stupid this early. In fact, let alone this early, these stats are enough to take you straight to level rank 40 Land of Carnage gear in post-game. And pretty much the only fight you can't win is Ball. And it only took 10 times longer than it normally would if you don't limit yourself to chapter 4. Also, if you want to go the extra mile, you could continue to dupe all of this gear for your characters. But seriously guys, don't do this. The amount of time it takes for the amount of power isn't worth it. We're missing so many key features that you can actually get far more broken far quicker if you just play normally and get to the post game. There's squads, maps and other NPCs which quite literally speed up everything we have just done by a drastic amount. Add on to that all the abilities we can't get at this point, and it becomes kind of sad really. But hey, a game designed to be grinded got the ever-living hell grinded out of it. And if you're wondering, this took over 260 hours of gameplay. It might seem bad, but if you do everything other than the magic extract, you can actually get it done in under 30 hours. Pretty much all of the time is solely for the magic extract and getting it to 10 million. And just so you know, this one step only takes about 20 minutes in post game. Quite a difference, isn't there? Well, I told you some things take a hundred times longer and some even a thousand times longer. But hey, if you want to do, your, uh, do this yourself, leave a comment and you might just win the giveaway to get the game for free. Still, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then be sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Also, if you want to help support me, then consider becoming a Patreon to get some cool goodies as well. Finally, consider checking out my social media, all of which are linked down below in the description. Thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you soon.